Hey everyone, um, my name is Ramesh. Uh, I'm one of the engineering managers in SharePoint. Along with me, I have Ravi. Uh, he's also one of the managers. So I'll be talking about the managed metadata service and Ravi will be covering the enterprise content types. Uh, so primarily, today we'll be focusing on some of the new API support that we are bringing into both these services. And if you see previously, we had support only for uh, CSOM access to term store and very limited content type APIs uh, that are previously available. Uh, over the last one year, we have been working on building uh, REST API access to uh, the taxonomy term store and enterprise uh, content types. So from a term store point of view, uh, we'll be supporting CRUD operations on terms, term set and term groups. We'll be uh, initially supporting most of the uh, properties at the term level and the term set and the term group uh, level. Uh, we'll be uh, introducing a new concept of relationships uh, to support pinning and reuse of terms. And I'll be giving a quick uh, overview of some of these in the following slides. Sorry. The API model, uh, the entities in the term store are uh, groups which uh, represent the term group sets, which are the term sets and terms themselves. And each of them have an ID for themselves uh, to access uh, those entities. So this is how uh, a get on the term store would look like, where you will be listing all the term groups under the term store. Uh, it will return you the uh, first level list of term groups. You can put some filters and uh, do pagination also if needed on this one. It will return you the ID of the term group, uh, the description of the term group, the label of the term group, and some additional properties. Uh, like type of the term group, is it a regular group, is it a system term group, or is it a site collection term group? Let me now move on to the term set access. So in the similar way, once you have the group ID, you can fetch all the term sets under that group. And at a term set level, it will return you uh, the ID of the term set, the label of the ID, uh, level of the term set, what are the different uh, translations that are available at a term set level. And you can further drill down to get the list of terms under that uh, particular term set. Uh, in a similar fashion, it will return you all the different properties of the terms. And in the interest of time, I'm skipping the post operations for most of this. Uh, I'm just listing down only the get operations. Post will also be uh, similar for this, where you can uh, update these properties or uh, change, modify uh, these properties. So uh, under a term, you can have children, which are the uh, terms that are created under a given term. Uh, and enumerating the children will return you all the top level children of that term. You can further drill down uh, for each of those terms to get the descendant tree. For any term that has been either pinned or reused, you can use a slash relationships operation on that one, which will enumerate uh, where all is this particular term either pinned or reused. And we also support like uh, posting onto the relationships to create new relationship from a given term to another term or from a given term to a different term set. So that's uh, mostly from the term store point of view. I'll give it to Ravi to talk about the content type APS. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so content types, uh, there haven't been any uh, REST API uh, so far. Uh, there was only one REST API which would just list the content type. So uh, we have added a bunch more content types to support all the CRUD operation. You can create uh, content types on sites or at list level, uh, remove them, update, delete them. Uh, you can also create uh, content type columns, site columns. You, you can also publish and unpublish content types and uh, set document templates on content types. So uh, I'm just walking you through a couple of content type examples that we are going to have. Um, for example, you can see that. Uh, uh, so one other thing that I would like to mention here is that uh, instead of going to content type hub and creating all the new content types there. Uh, we have actually, uh, uh, we are actually providing new UX from uh, tenant admin where with uh, modern UX uh, to create new content types. Uh, so uh, for example, you can create a new content type. Uh, the request URL would be of this type. 
uh, you would be specifying the name, uh, description, uh, the group to which the content type needs to belong, and then uh, the output of that would be uh, the content type that got created with its ID. Um, so similarly, uh, you can create a, a column also, a site column also, uh, and add it to the content type. So similarly, you can create a, a site column and associate it to a content type. Um, and uh, this will allow you to uh, create content types at either the content type hub level or at a specific site level. So the API supports both today. Uh, so uh, these are just a few of the APIs that we are providing uh, shortly. Um, so like, as you can see, you can list all the content types uh, at the site level or at a particular list level. Uh, you can update content types at a particular site or a list level. Uh, you can delete a content type. Uh, and for all the other gets at the bottom, they also support uh, patch and delete. Uh, you can uh, publish the content type. Uh, you can add columns, remove columns from the content type. Uh, you can reorder uh, columns in the content type. Uh, so uh, these are some of the APIs that we are going to provide going forward. That's pretty much what I have. Kuch, um, we have plenty of time. So let's not close the connection. Don't don't close sharing it. And uh, let's actually go back yeah. on just recapping things. Let's go back on the taxonomy first and start from there. Um, there's a good set of questions. And, and let's recap yes. because not all of the people can see the chat. So, will it support setting term store administrator? Because currently there's no API for that one. I think Ravi answered uh, on the chat already that the term store, the new API, does support adding uh, the store administrator in the in the store. Yeah. So, yep, uh, and that was one thing. There was a a recap question on the chat related. So, is this only for accessing the terms? Or is it really the full CRUD operation? So CRUD meaning create, read, update, and delete. It's, and the answer is? Yes, it's a full yeah. CRUD operation on the terms. Uh, we support yeah. most of the properties on the terms that exist today. And yeah. uh, you can uh, update, delete, and patch uh, these terms, term sets, and term store. Yeah. Sorry, term groups. Um, then there was a good question related on uh, do we have a method uh, to only retrieve a one language uh, of terms or uh, term, terms so rather than getting the, all of the translations at once? Yeah, you can use a filter option uh, that's provided to just get the uh, single uh, language. Yep, and that was uh, Ravi answered on that one as well. Now there's a there's a good uh, interesting. Um, discussion point um, let's let's actually do that right away in here and then talk about the content type and recap some of those things as well um, so this one uh, is now in the underscore api v v2.1 if we have a look on the urls and that's that's actually quite important um, to realize that both of these api sets are in the underscore api v2.1 uh, and um, can either one of the, you kind of explain for the audience what does it mean comparing on the craft API? Because there was a question related on that one as well. Yeah, so we will be following up uh, this REST APIs with the graph release also that is currently work in progress. Uh, in fact, like both of them are work in progress, the REST APIs and the graph APIs. REST APIs we plan to ship sooner, uh, immediately followed it by the graph support. Yes, yeah. that answer. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's precisely what I was uh, wanted to actually get uh, from you as well. So now, now just to clarify that from the audience, because I obviously Microsoft internal people know how this works, but and just to clarify for those who are on this call and do not understand how this works in the in the craft perspective, we're not going to duplicate these APIs to craft. That's not what it means. Um, the craft is actually an abstraction layer or a wrapper. Which people, which behind of the scenes are actually hitting these same APIs. So it's not like we are basically doing well, two sets of different APIs, once for the API v2, and then completely new set of APIs and implementing that for Craft. That's not how it works, right? Um, anybody who wants to comment from Microsoft side on that? Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> that, so let's keep it short. You. This is an interesting well, situation. You. You sound more like a Finn than I do because Finns are super short typically. No, just, no that just understanding kidding. is correct. Uh, that understanding yeah. is correct. Was. 
Yeah, excellent. Just to, just to clarify that for the for the audience as well. Um, it's good to understand that it uh, how the abstraction layers actually work. And uh, basically, the craft is an abstraction layer which then provides you the unified authentication across all of the different services and uh, and applications what we have in Microsoft 365 and and other things as well. But then behind of the scenes, uh, the specific services like SharePoint and OneDrive owns their own API, including the Graph API. So we, we implement that and then we expose that in the Graph and that requires certain additional set of things to consider um, before it can be um, exposed in the Graph as well. Um, anything which you want to add on that one or should we talk about slightly the content type uh, APIs more? Can can move to the content type. Thank you, by the way, Ravi, for being super active on the chat. That's highly helpful. Uh, I'm just recapping some of these things because not all of the people can see the uh, chat always. Now, sure. uh, the, there was a question related, will this work for content type hub uh, as well? And I think Ravi, you answered already that yes, you can create content types in a content type hub. But then there's a follow-up question there, which I'm not sure if somebody asked already because I'm, uh, I'm there's so many things happening. Now, in the content type hub, there's this feature where we publish the content types to the site collection. Can we do that using the new content type APIs, or is that something which we're still planning to do in the future? Uh, uh, we can publish the uh, content types in the content type hub using the publish operation. Yes, okay. that will be supported. You can Excellent. publish and unpublish from the content type hub. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you're basically then targeting the site collection where you're publishing the, the same functionalities which we have in the UI is available in the API. Is that correct? Yes, that would be right. Yep, excellent, excellent. And then uh, there was the, 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 I'm just double checking, that was the content type hub question. So there was a question, obviously, the, the, the obvious question, when is this out? When, are, when can we hit this API? Is, right now, it's probably not yet working, or is it working already in SharePoint? And, and can we talk about any timelines, or is it too early for that? No, so I think we can talk about timelines. We are looking at like uh, mid to end of May for some of these APIs to be available. Uh, and uh, I mean, followed by the graph APS. So I think there was a question on the documentation also. Uh, I think like once the APS are available, at the same time, we'll make the documentation also available for this one. Yeah. And that will mean that within four weeks. So this is preview, uh, like it was mentioned in Ramesh's uh, intro page as well. So we're basically an introduction on, on what's coming. But it's super important that partners and customers do know beforehand uh, so what's coming as well. So you don't invest for, let's say, in a wrong API. So this is coming. And like I said, Ram by Ramesh, uh, plan to get out in the mid-May. Um, and then right about same time frame or slightly later, the graph APIs as well. There's a, there's, well, they, are, they will be out pretty much at the same time as well. So, and the documentation. The graph APIs will follow. They probably won't be available at mid or end May, but uh, yeah. by, hopefully by end of Q2, we should have the graph APIs as well. Yeah. And end of Q2 means by end of by June. June. So yeah, June, exactly. Yes. So it's not a massive amount of time. So one month later or four weeks, uh, but I, I, I think it's good to get, uh, obviously it would be great to have everything ready with the snap of our fingers without anybody actually working and, and using a tremendous amount of resources on that. But uh, if we can, getting something out first uh, in the in the V2 endpoint and then through the craft next uh, is completely understandable as well. And I think everybody will be super happy about this. Um, uh, calendar, we are, oh, he's fiscal. it's calendar year for Rob. Rob is asking, so end of June for craft. End of June, Thursday. end of June, yeah. yeah. It's good clarification. We in Microsoft, those who work with Microsoft, close to Microsoft, they, they know that we have our fiscal year is completely, <laughs> or it's strange comparing to the calendar years. So that's a good question. Oh, that's a good one. Actually, Kambadi uh, Ravi is asking, will the release of content type publishing be improved? So currently it takes actually quite a lot of time to get the content type replicated to the target site collection. That's a really good question, actually. Um, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just assuming, I don't have the facts, but this is using the existing infrastructure for the replication. So we're basically still using the, the underlying time job based replication of the content types across the site collections. Is that correct? Yes, uh, we are currently using the um, existing infrastructure itself, uh, but we do hear the pain. Uh, we know that multiple 
customers are uh, facing the issue of content type sync taking a long time uh, yeah. for them for this uh, content types to reach the sites once they are published uh, we are seriously looking into it uh, and uh, we will make we, you know uh, we are looking into it and uh, trying to make sure that uh, we could improve the performance yeah. we are aware of the problem and we are looking into it yeah, it is a kind of a, it's one of those classic challenges and it's good that we are addressing that or planning to address that in the future, like like indicated, it's not there right now, but we know the pain um, and, and we're looking into improving that. So, and this means that as part of the, as an example, classic challenge being that when you create a new site collection, those content types are not immediately available in that site collection. It takes a while uh, to get them there. And, and there's multiple ways of addressing and fixing that but we need to still work on that one in Microsoft side. Uh, but we we want that, and uh, we are aware of this issue, and that's that's good example of a a really powerful and, and important feedback, which we want from the community. And so we keep on, you need to keep on reminding us, and we need to be honest uh, on our what are we delivering. So again, recapping the the V2 endpoint API, which is the SharePoint endpoint REST API, coming around mid to May or end of May, and then the Graph APIs, which is based on exactly the same taxonomy, which you're seeing, for example, in the screen, is coming then by end of June this year. So really cool that we're finally getting this one out. And then I can I can close the user voice this year. Yes, <laughs> it's been open for a while. Yes. <laughs> but thank, thank you, you, Ramesh. Thank Stay you, Rami and Ravi, for that one. Mm -hmm.